Hey Lions fans, Ash Thompson from the Detroit Lions podcast here. Today we're going to go over what is probably my biggest pet peeve in all of media. And if you guys have been watching this series, you know I have a few of them at this point. Uh, but this one is one that everybody gets wrong, and I'm not sure it's unintentional a lot of the time. I think they're just trying to make fans angry. Today we're going to go over how dead cap works. <laughs> So, player signs a contract. Six years, $120 million, $40 million signing bonus, a bunch of guaranteed salary, some roster bonus stuff, yada, yada, yada. What if the player doesn't live up to that contract and the team wants to cut him early? Then there is a charge on the salary cap that is called a dead cap charge because it's for a player who is no longer on the team. Just a colloquial phrase, basically, that they use. Player did not die in most cases, but the cap charge is for a player that's not there anymore. Most of that comes from the signing bonus proration. As we covered in a previous video, the signing bonus is split among either the entire length of the contract or if it's longer than five years, just the first five years of the contract. So in this case, $40 million signing bonus, $8 million a year hits the salary cap for the first five years of this contract. That's where most of the dead cap charge would come from. The rest of it would come from a couple years of guaranteed salary and say a roster bonus that's guaranteed. So in the contract I'm putting up on the screen here, year one. The total cap hit is $9 million with their $8 million prorated signing bonus hit and their $1 million salary. Now, players do this because it's year one. They just got a giant $40 million check. They don't really care about their salary that year or often in year two if it's a big enough signing bonus like this one. They're trying to make it so that they can assemble a winning team. That's why these cap hits are a little smaller at the beginning. So if the team cut the player one week in, it's a $53 million dead cap hit. That's straight up. They're never going to do that. The first few years of this are almost entirely irrelevant. Players don't get cut during periods like this because of the difference. In year two, the team would have to take a dead cap hit that is $31 million bigger than keeping the player. So even if the player was awful in year one, they're not going to do that. There's just no reason to. If the player can do anything, even if he can't do anything, <laughs> frankly, it's just better to not take that hit. Year three is where this gets a little more interesting uh, because the team could theoretically at that point make a move if they wanted to using something called the June 1st cut. Now, what that does is it delays the team getting any benefit until the 1st of June, which is why a lot of reporters don't bother even discussing it when they're talking about player movements and players getting cut, because if it's a big dollar value, teams probably aren't going to bother doing that unless they have no other option. It saves the team a little bit of money because it's split over two years. But they don't get the money until June, which means free agency starts in March. What are they doing with that money? Maybe paying some draft picks. There's other better ways to free up a little bit of space if you need some extra to do that. So they're just creating a little bit of cap carryover, which would immediately be eaten by the dead cap charge they didn't pay the previous year if it goes into the next year. So sometimes they want to free up a little space so they have some options in that year. That, that's about the only reason. It doesn't happen that often because of that. It's not generally considered a good move. Year four is where the player gets extremely cuttable. Various websites will say that there's like a team out in this year or something like that, but there isn't anything written into the contract that gives the team an out. Teams can cut players at any time NFL contracts are not guaranteed. All it means is they would save more money from the total cap hit than the dead cap charge that's associated with it. Now the team saves the entire salary that this player would have been paid. In real money, the team saves $12 million in addition to the $14 million from the next season and the $28 million from the season after that in this contract. But as far as the salary cap is concerned, there are still two years of prorated signing bonus that haven't been accounted for yet. They hit when this player is cut. So instead of a total cap hit of $20 million for having the player, the team has a $60 million dead cap hit. They saved $4 million. That's the number that matters here. That is what determines when a player is likely to be cut, because if they have literally any value and aren't a cancer in the locker room, until the team saves money cutting them, they're not going to because it just doesn't make sense to do that. And in year five, it gets even bigger. Basically, if the player hasn't been performing, this player is not going to be on the team because the team saves $14 million as far as their cap hit goes by moving on from them. And in year six, because there is no prorated signing bonus left, the salary is not guaranteed, and these incentives don't get paid unless the player makes them, the entire potential cap hit of $28 million is gone. If they cut the player, there is no dead cap associated with that. Now, you understand dead cap in the NFL better than a lot of people who get paid money to write about it apparently, or they're just trying to irritate you. Either way, a person who says something like, well, the Lions are paying Matthew Stafford $19 million and he's not even on the team. You can just ignore that person. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about, or they're just trying to make you angry. Have a great day.